Hello, this is Crystal Racing with the mid-season review for the Renault and the horse team. And of course, I will start with the headline. It's Carlos Sainz off to McLaren. Of course, many tip him to go to Red Bull to become Max Verstappen's teammate. But of course, it's well known that during his time at Toro Rosso, both he and Verstappen clashed numerous on numerous occasions over various incidents involving team orders um two in particular singapore 2015 and australia 2016 when both drivers refused to move over to let their teammates through despite the fact that the their teammates behind them were on faster strategies and i do also believe Carlos side could be off to mclaren because of course, Fernando Alonso may be vacating that seat at the end of this season. And perhaps he may have an idea in his head that he might want to try and benefit his, his countryman's career by getting him a seat at McLaren rather than let Carlos Sainz have to go to a team like Red Bull. Carlos Sainz has been fairly decent, although he has struggled against Kopp Nico Hulkenberg. Um, next up, it's Kevin Magnussen, who has been one of the most improved drivers of the season, if not the most improved driver of the season. The Dane has had some very solid performances at places like Spain and France, to name but two, and he has massively outpaced his team leader, Roman Grosjean. Whilst the Frenchman has been crashing out of races here, there and everywhere, Kevin has been kept, kept his car on the road. Yes, he had that race at Baku where he had a massive clattering of Pierre Gasly and Marcus Ericsson, but that has been the exception, not the rule this season. And he looks very much set to get a new contract for 2019 at Haas. Of course, there have been outside rumours they could be getting Kimi Raikkonen's seat for 2019, but of course those rumours have died off. And now on to Nico Hulkenberg, who has been the best of the rest this season. Quite incredibly, this drive, this German, has not had a single podium finish, despite all his lightning performances in qualifying and his superb ability in wet and mixed conditions, and his ability to overtake cars as if they're not even there. Nico Hulkenberg is, has to be one of the greatest paradoxes in F1 history. Of course, he almost got a seat at Ferrari for 2014, but of course the management saw him as being too heavy for the hybrid cars, which of course with these bigger, heavier cars is proving to be less of an issue. And of course with the new driver weight regulations for next season, it means that his weight advantage will be negated even further. And of course, with a new teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, I expect a lot more to come from Hulkenberg. And of course, on to Roman Grosjean, who has been extremely erratic this season. Yes, I know his performances have recovered of late. Of course, a superb drive to fourth place in Austria. And of course, another points finish, a sixth place finish at Germany in the mixed conditions, which, whilst everyone was spinning off for once, Roman Grosjean actually kept his car on the road. And I have to say, but unfortunately though, is it too little too late? I mean, there was that calamitous spin in Spain where he took Hulkenberg and Gasly out on the first lap, of course. And then of course in Baku, he crashed out behind a safety car. Um, and, then, and of course his driving has been here, there and everywhere at times. Of course in Canada, despite the fact he drove a brilliant race to almost to finish 12th he did have a collision with Esteban Ocon and it's these little incidents that really are putting the Frenchman under some serious pressure of course I do have a theory that he has been you know desperately trying to overdrive in the hopes of getting a one last chance of driving for a top team like Ferrari but to be honest I don't think he's ever going to get near it so um of course, Horse have indeed been the most improved team of 2018. Of course, yes, they had that calamity in Australia where they lost 20 possible points. Very unlucky, but 
since then they have more than made up for it and my word and if it wasn't for the fact they have a restrictive budget and rely on buying parts of Ferrari I honestly don't know why Kijin Haas doesn't try and make the team become a serious competitive competitive team by I don't know trying to get a serious corporate backer behind him and and you know just generally try and actually be a major player in F1 because right now he's running the team in a B team format as if it's a junior team because I think there's a lot of talent going to waste that horse right now and as for um, the Renault team they have improved they have been improving very solidly but they are still very far apart um of course, this season, their reliability levels have improved, their qualifying and the race pace has been far more consistent rather than fluctuating from race to race. I mean, their car actually looks competitive at most types of circuit, slow, medium, fast, rather than just a few, like, you know, fast at, I don't know, for example, Monaco. And, you know, the, the engineering, the, the design of the car has been much improved, but maybe under Cyril Abibor they might need to find a better team leader I don't quite think he's up to the task and I have to say in terms of predictions it's pretty much as you were so thank you for watching this this video at, here at Crystal Racing please like subscribe comment share and I'll see you again next time